In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create and use scatter plots in Excel to conduct a powerful exploratory data analysis. If you're not familiar, a scatter plot is a visualization of two columns of numeric data, one column on the x axis and one column on the y axis. And what I will show you in this video is how to increase the power of scatter plots because they're, they are immensely useful just out of the box in Excel but you can give them more power. You can do all kinds of really cool types of analyses if you add things like some feature engineering, jitter, and a third dimension. We're gonna cover all three of those in this particular video. So let's flip over to Excel and see what we got going on. Okay, you can see here that I'm in Excel, and all I've done is taken the Titanic data set that I've been using throughout this series, and I just hid columns that we don't really need. And what you can see here is just a subset of columns. And what we're going to do is explore a hypothesis that the age and the family size of females in third class might be associated with survival somehow, or reflexively associated with not surviving. Because remember, in this series, the data set we're using is the famous Kaggle Titanic data set. And the business question that we're trying to explore in this series is what patterns in the data that we have are highly associated with survival on the Titanic. Okay, so we've got our data. So the first thing that we wanna do is engineer a feature. We wanna create a new column of data that is derived from the columns of data that we already have. And the reason why we wanna do this is because it allows us to incorporate more pieces of information into a single data visualization. In this case, a single scatter plot. So what we know from the data is that column I here, SIBSPA, is the count of the siblings and or spouses that the passenger was traveling with on the Titanic. Similarly, PARCH stands for parents and children. That is the count of parents and or children that the passenger was traveling with on the Titanic. So for example, this, this passenger, row two, was traveling with one other person. So we can actually create a feature and engineer all of this information into a single numeric column, which then we can use on one of the axes of our scatter plot. So what we'll do is we'll create one called a new, uh, new feature, a new column of data called family size here. And you can see that, easy peasy. Now family size is a very simple calculation. It is the passenger themselves, so it's one, plus I2, or SIBSPA, plus J2, or PARCH. And that gives you the total number of folks traveling in this family group. And I'm gonna air quote that because it's not exactly correct, but it's good enough for our particular use case here. And you can see here that for row two, as we would expect, we have the passenger plus one SIBSPA, so they have a total family size of two. Sweet. And Excel, of course, auto-populates this feature, this column of data. And the first thing we notice, though, is that all of these values are discrete. They're all ones and twos and threes and fours. So what that means in a scatter plot is that these dots on the scatter plot, once you'll, you'll see this, it'll make more sense once I create the visualization. If you don't take care of this, the dots on the scatter plot will get stacked on top of each other. So, we can fix this with what's known as jitter. And what jitter does is introduce a little bit of randomness to the data so that they're not all ones and twos and threes and fours. So they'll be like 1.23 or 0.74, things like that. And then when you put them on a scatter plot, the dots kind of move apart a little bit and then you can see more of the patterns in the data. And like I said, this will make more sense once, once we actually see the visualization. But let's create a jittered version of family size. And this is very easy to do in Excel. So what we do here is we're gonna create a new feature, a new column called family size jitter. And we're gonna populate it. And it's a pretty simple calculation. We're going to use the rand function from Excel, which generates a random number from zero up to, but not including one. That's what the rand function does. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, cool. We take our values from family size, and then we add to it a call to the random function, which gives us a value between, once again, zero, including zero, 
up to one but not including one. Now, we want some of the data to be less than what it is and some of it to be more than it is. But since the RAND function only either adds zero all the way up to one, what we can do is we can subtract off 0.5. And what that'll give us is this kind of shake a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right of the original value. And once again, this will make a little bit more sense once you see it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. So we'll subtract off 0 0.5. And now you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Because look at these four cells of data right here. So originally they were two and two, but now after the jitter, one is 1.77 and one is 2.16, which will mean that they'll actually move out a little bit on the visualization. This is gonna be awesome, okay, excellent. Okay, now that I've got the jitter, I don't need these three columns, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hide them. And now we're off and ready to do what we want to do. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is we can say, look, we know we got some missing ages because you can see the blanks here. Here's a blank and here's a blank and here's a blank. So let's just go ahead and filter those out. I mean, strictly speaking, this isn't necessary, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway. So I'm gonna remove the blanks. And then once again, we're gonna filter down to just third-class females because that's the, that's the hypothesis, that's the question, that's the idea that we're exploring right now. So I want P-class of only third here, and I want sex of only female. Sweet. So now I'm filtering the table of data down to just the values that I'm interested in exploring. Now, next up, I need to, well, I shouldn't say I need to, but I want to, <laughs> I want to incorporate a third dimension of data here. Because by default, a scatter plot is a two-dimensional data visualization. It has a numeric data on the y-axis, and a numeric variable or column of data on the x-axis. And what I would like to do is actually color code the dots in the scatter plot based on survival, because that might pop a pattern to my eye. So that you can do that in Excel. There are multiple ways to do it. Unfortunately, they're all a bit clunky. I'm gonna show you one way to do it. It's not necessarily the best, but it is one way to do it. So what we do is we take the new survived column here and we can just sort it. And I'm gonna sort it in descending order from Z to A. And that'll put all the survived columns, uh, excuse me, survived rows first, and then the perished rows second. And that's exactly what I want. Okay, so now I'm ready to actually start building my scatter plot. So what I do is I say I want age and family size jitter. Age is okay already because age has a bunch of different values. So the dots are already likely to be quite far apart based on age alone. And we've enforced jitter on family size to work with that so that we should get a nice scatter plot here. And once again, it'll make more sense when you see it. So what I do is I just highlight all the ages that I want um, through survived. Notice here, I'm only highlighting the ages in the family size jitter up to the point where the label switches over from survive to perish. Because what we need to do in a scatter plot is we need to add the data in two groups and then Excel will automatically color code the dots on the scatter chart appropriately. And I'll show you how to do that. So we've got the data. We've got the age and the family size jitter data for third class females that survived. Sweet. So we can tell Excel, hey, we would like a scatter plot, please. So we go here and we grab this right here, the scatter chart in Excel terms. It's more commonly known as a scatter plot, but they're basically the same thing. And I just say, hey, insert this for me. And Excel says, no problem, Dev, here you go. Here's a scatter chart for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this up to the top just because I like it. It's gonna be convenient for me. And let me scroll over a little bit so you can see it better. So, And I'm gonna get rid of some of the chart junk here. So I'm gonna get rid of these, get rid of these. Okay, awesome. So what we have here is along the x-axis, we've got age, and over here we have family size jitter. So of course I can do things like edit this and make this survived. I wanna label this survived because these data points are the survived data points. So I just go ahead and do that real quick by editing the series. And then what we need to do now is we need to 
add a new series for those that perished. And what that will do is that'll put a second set of dots on the scatter plot, and it'll have, they'll have a different color. And that'll be nice, because then it should make things pop for us. So how I do that is I click on Add. Oh, by the way, let me, let me go back. I did that pretty quick. So let's go ahead and click OK. By the way, so what I did was I just clicked, right-clicked on the chart, and I selected Select Data from the Context menu that popped up. And then I edited the data series that I already had in the chart from the previous operation. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. So I'm going to add a new one. And I'm going to call this one Perished, because these are the data values from for females in third class that did not survive. So I can scroll back over here a little bit. And what I need to do is now select the individual series of data. So for example, it's like, well, okay, cool. You want to add a series to this scatter plot, Dave? Great. Tell me what X values you want to use. And then tell me what Y values you want to use. So I'm going to go, okay, here are the X values I want to use. I want to use these X values here, the age for those that perished. And then we just scroll all the way down here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Boom. Cool. And then I want the Y values, and basically I do the same thing. Just go up here and only select those that perished. So I just go down here, boop, like that. Cool. And then I click OK. And then I click OK. And then if I scroll back up, awesome. I'm going to scroll back over so you can see more. And look at this. This is awesome. But we can do some cool things. Let's go ahead and let's add our legend here. Cool. Maybe we'll add the axis titles just to make sure that we don't forget what's what. So this is age, and this is the family size. Now it's jittered, but we don't really need to add that in there. Okay. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it easier. Boom. Okay. Now notice that See the, see how this right here? See these dots? See how notice how they're like a little bit moved apart? That's the result of the jitter. That's why we wanted a jitter. If we just kept the data as in the original format where they were just single whole numbers, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, a lot of these dots would be on top of each other. So that kind of hides some of the pattern in the data. So we introduce a little bit of jitter, a little bit of randomness to make the visualization pop. Now, I need to be crystal clear on this point, okay? I need to be crystal. You only add jitter for this visualization. You don't actually use jitter if you're like, for example, you were going to do a machine learning model or something like that. No, no, no. You only use the jitter just for the visualization. The jitter feature is only used for exploring the data. You're not actually using it for any sort of statistical or machine learning analysis. So that's key. It's purely for visualization only. Only. Okay, that's the caveat. Now look at how awesome this is. Look, look, the patterns just pop to your eye. So first thing, let me show you what I mean by that. So if you draw an imaginary line do, 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 around in this area, right, right here, around five, around a family size of five, and you go up, you just look up visually, notice that only three of the dots in the data points in this portion of the chart survived. The vast majority of the dots that we see here that are colored orange, which means they perished, which tells you, at least for females in third class, females in third class that have ages, that's the other thing, remember we filtered out the folks with no ages, so females in third class that have ages, generally speaking, if they have a very large family size, they overwhelmingly do not survive based on the data that we have. That's a, that's a very interesting, actionable result from this exploratory data analysis. Similarly, you could draw a vertical line here around, let's say, I don't know, we'll, we'll call this what, 37-ish. And if you draw a vertical line straight up and then look to the right, once again, you'll notice the vast majority of the dots are colored orange or perished. So what this tells us once again, of females in third class that have ages, given the data set that we are working with here, the vast majority of them that are older do not survive. That's another pattern. And then you can see the combination of the two. So 
data points that are far to the right on the x-axis and are high up on the y-axis. That means older women in third class with ages that also have large family sizes. And you can see like in this quadrant right here, once again, overwhelmingly the dots, like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots, but only one out of the seven dots actually survived. That's a powerful result. That's a powerful exploratory data analysis. You can see here, this is wildly useful stuff. Now, unfortunately, using these charts like this is super useful, but like I said earlier, it's pretty clunky in Excel. Now, there's actually a better way to do this sort of analysis, and let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, this is an example of what I mean by this. So this chart right here was created in the R programming language, and what it allows us to do is to create scatter plots like we just saw, but using multiple multiple dimensions simultaneously. So this is a very, very, this is, this is, <laughs> this is so awesome. By the way, this is the kind of thing I actually do in my own hands-on analytics work, especially when I'm doing exploratory data analysis. So check this out, right? We have the age column here and the age feature. We have the sex feature here. We got females and males. We got two there. Then we've got the class of passenger. That's a third dimension here, first, second, and third class. And then lastly, we have the color coding of whether they pair, whether the passenger perished or survived. That's four. So this is a four-dimensional data visualization. And notice how some how many things pop. You just kind of like sit back and just look at it. And of course, you can see here, here's females in third class. And we easily see the pattern that we talked about in Excel. Up here, overwhelmingly, folks did not survive. From this point forward over here, folks overwhelmingly didn't survive. That pattern jumps at us. I know it's a little small, but if you actually created this in R programming, the R programming language, you could actually make it really big and you could see it quite easily but I wanted to show you all of it at once here. And you can see all kinds of patterns, right? Look at this, look at males in third class. Look at males in third class. So look at all of these folks right here. So these are young males in third class with relatively small family sizes. You get a nice cluster of survival. But then notice this, young males, boys in third class with large families, look at that, only one only one survived dot. Everything else is perished. Look at that. Everything else is perished. And you can see here various other types of patterns, very old males in third class with small family sizes. They also perished, basically all of them. So this shows you that if you can throw all of these scatter plots up at the same time, it's super awesome. Look at that. You see all these patterns just pop. Now, of course, as we already know from earlier <laughs> um, videos in the series, that females in first and second class overwhelmingly survived, so that's why they're all mostly this turquoise survived color. Anyway, so if you're interested in learning how to create data visualizations like this, and by the way, your Excel skills makes learning how to do this very, very easy, you can check up here. I've got an online program where I can teach you as an Excel user how to create data visualizations just like this in R, and it's wildly simple. You shouldn't be intimidated by it all. You can totally do it. There you have it. That's part six of the series. If you're interested in seeing more of the videos in the series, you can go ahead and click up here. There'll be a playlist. Also part seven, I'm going to be looking at tree maps in Excel. And when that video is done, it's going to show up either here or here. Part five, scatter plots. Okay. This video shows you how powerful they are. You should certainly be using them in your exploratory data analyses because they are wickedly, wickedly awesome. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.